This Pokemon Game Boy Micro is 437,000 yen. Oh, wait. Is that $4,000? video games is an otherworldly experience. It's really cool to see such a passion for games and retro collecting like they have at such a grand scale over there. Video game tourism is huge and they know this and sometimes they try to capitalize on that. I spent about 10-ish days in Japan with some of my friends and the majority of that time was spent retro game hunting. Going to all different types of retro game stores that had used gaming products, sometimes for dirt cheap, but a lot of the times in the more touristy areas, they were huge ripoffs. Everybody likes to talk about how cool it is to see all these rare collectibles in these infamous stores. And it is really cool to see an entire section of a city that is just dedicated to video games and nerd stuff. But probably don't buy anything from there. We spent a great deal of time in some major Japanese cities. That's admittedly not where the best deals are gonna be. But we did find some fantastic deals hidden away outside of those tourist traps. I had a list of a couple of things that I was looking for while I was over there, one of which being a Famicom that I've always wanted. As you can imagine, those are plentiful over there. Some other things I was looking for were like Game Boys and DSs that I could try to find for dirt cheap, maybe some broken ones that I could fix up later on. But as you can imagine, it's kind of hard to justify fixing up or modding a Game Boy that you buy for $200. Holy. But we did eventually find some fantastic deals. I want you guys to learn from our mistakes. I'll show you what we did right on this trip. We went to Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. And for the most part, we stayed in those major cities. And there were some places I would warn against going to, but a couple that I would definitely recommend if you ever plan on making a trip out to Japan. This video is sponsored by Factor. Nice. So, uh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm trying this new diet now where every time I eat a carb, I get, I get shocked. Isn't that, like, not good for you? Yeah, carbs are horrible for you. No. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. You could also be enjoying clean eating with Factor. They even have calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serve. Ah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm listening. Now keep going. And action, and do it. And you're live. And, and, and three. Do it. Do, do it. These meals are perfect for when I don't wanna think about food. You can pop it in the microwave if you're in a real hurry. I usually take about seven minutes to make it in the oven. And you can try it for yourself by going to factor75.com and use the promo code, you hungry? 50 for a whole 50% off your first Factor box. That sounds awesome, actually. I'm gonna order Factor right now. I can't feel below my neck. Oh, there we go. Mm. Just eat the broccoli. No, it's gross. Ew, I don't wanna do it. Ah. We decided to get Akihabara out of the way the second we got to Japan, the first day we were there. You might've heard of Akihabara before. It's like the weeb mecca. There's a ton of manga, a lot of toys and figures, a bunch of made cafes, but most of all, there's just a ton of games. There's a lot of arcades there, but we were mostly there for the retro game stores. There are about a dozen just on one square block. They're all really close. It's crazy to see all of that, and there sure is a lot to do. We spent pretty much the whole day pouring through the collections that these stores had. The first store we went into was actually Bic Camera. 
big camera can only be described as B and H meets Target meets Best Buy. They had absolutely everything and a huge selection of games, mostly modern games, and also an awesome jingle that I'm gonna be singing for the rest of my life. Wood had a field day in their Nintendo Switch section. This doesn't interest me at all. I want some retro stuff. But their selection was kind of insane, I have to admit. Lots of wacky controllers. It looks like Japan has a Nintendo Switch controller problem. What's all this garbage? What is all this? What is this? Yeah, look, this looks like a, like a cheap tattoo. They had a PC and gaming handheld section. That was pretty cool. They had an ROG Ally with a Raikiri Pro controller that I've never seen in a store before. An Aya oh Neo God, Air. Wait, why am I excited for this? I have this. Get out of here. <laughs> a One X player? It was cool to see all these handhelds in a major retail store. They also had a whole lot of very clicky keyboards. Ooh. Oh, yeah, baby. That's awesome. From here, we went straight to Super Potato, which is a pretty famous one. It's cool to see what they have there, but don't buy anything there. Their handheld selection was pretty abysmal. A GBA for $153? A clear Game Boy Color for $182? What? A DMG original regular old Game Boy for $212, man? Who is buying these? Have they ever seen a Game Boy before? That markup is insane. This is about where I made maybe my biggest mistake of the whole trip. No, that was the revolving sushi I got. That was a tourist trap. I've always wanted a Donkey Kong Game & Watch, and I've never seen one in person for under $100. Part of the reason that I want one, that's the first D-pad that was ever in anything, and the D-pad hasn't changed since then. That's a piece of history I would love to have. And this one that they had at Super Potato was looking pretty mint. I'm gonna get this and then I'm gonna find it in Kyoto for half the price. <laughs> I think I was just excited to be in Japan. I ended up buying it for $94. What I should have done was Google translated this little bit on the label because that says that the screen has some leaking and it sure does. I got pretty screwed. This is also the only store on the trip that didn't ask if I wanted to see inside. I didn't even get to open it and look at it. Why didn't I ask to open it and look at it? What was wrong with me? Also, looking back at it now, $100 is like the price of a good condition one on eBay. One that has a screen that's intact. So I got they me. I kind of myself. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's move on to the next place. The next place of interest was probably Soft Map in Akihabara. This might have been my favorite spot in Akihabara. I dropped some before you. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, bro. Everybody, it's rock and roll. It's owned by Bic Camera, so no wonder it's so cool. I think it's just their second hand store. They also had an ROG Ally on display. Wood, once again, was preoccupied with their Switch games. What do you think this is? That's a Nintendo Switch game. <laughs> e over here found a really cool burgundy DSi XL complete in box for just $37. And that was in near mint condition. I saw a super cheap DS Lite in my favorite rose color for only $20, but it was all sorts of messed up. Two yellow screens, that's fixable, but I decided it. I, I, didn't, I didn't want it, it wasn't worth it. After that, we passed through the market of cables and then hit a few more stores. One of the smaller ones had more GBAs for an outrageous and disappointing $150. Trader is one of the bigger stores with loads of used games and toys. I bought some used toys there last time I was there in 2019. They also had a GBA Micro Famicom Edition, another console I've been dying to get my hands on for a whopping $264, which honestly isn't that terrible for, for what that is, but it's not great either, so I didn't buy it. And that's about all I have to say about Akihabara. We, we left there kind of disappointed. I'm sure people are gonna say that I should have gone to this place or that place, but A, there were a lot of places that we went to that I just didn't put in the video, and B, 
I don't believe you that they would have been any better. I went to Akihabara for the first time in 2019. I did basically the same thing that I did now. I went retro game hunting through all these different stores. I vlogged the whole experience. I just never released that vlog because it was incredibly disappointing even back then. Everything I found then was the same price or higher than the prices I found on eBay plus shipping to America. So like, it's not worth the trip. In 2019, the one game I was really looking for was Super Back to the Future for the Super Famicom. That's not a game we have here in America. And I got it, but it wasn't cheap. It was about the same price as I could have paid for on eBay. I was just excited to be there. If you're going to Japan anyway, you should check out Akihabara if you've never been, just for the sights and for the toys. It's cool to see all of that stuff there. And the toys, actually, you can find some pretty good deals on toys. But if you're going there, for the retro gaming history, it's cool to see it all, but don't buy anything. The next day, we took a trip down to Nakano, which is an awesome spot with this big, long market. But inside that market was a mall that was almost like a flea market of manga. There were tons and tons of used manga stores. There were lots and lots of toys, vintage toys. I picked up a Metal Gear toy for about 50 bucks. There was one shop with tons of original anime cells. This man that last came placed all over here. It's like a bunch of different stores and it's all used books and stuff. And this is where they're processing everything that everybody's selling back. So like mango art, you got we'll fit old used books and CDs and stuff. <laughs> it looks like a fish market where it's all used mango. I think there were supposed to be a couple of retro game stores in this mall, but Maybe they were all closed that day because we only saw one. But this one ended up being one of my favorite stores that we went to on this whole trip. Lashenbang, which is apparently a chain. They had a small little shop in Nakano. Finally, we've got some handhelds. Another Rose DS Lite for $20. This one in slightly better condition. A GBA for just $50. We're getting better now. They had broken PSPs for between $10 and $40. I actually regret not picking any of those up. I've never owned a PSP before. I have no idea how to fix one of those up, but it might have been a cool little project. What I ended up buying was a Rockman Dash Pack for PSP. I might not own a PSP, but I like me some Mega Man Legends. This was just $33. WarioWare Twisted for $20. I just liked the look of this box. And a blue broken DS Lite for an eye-popping $12. It took a little while to figure out what was actually wrong with it. The bottom screen had some yellowing in the corners and the top screen was pretty messed up. But at the very least, this would make for a fine candidate for a Game Boy Macro. But I also have a donor top screen from the last Game Boy Macro mod that I did. And I have a donor bottom screen for some reason. So for just $12 and a little bit of work, I could have a brand new fully functional DS Lite for $12. Pop an R4 and an Easy Flash in there and we have one of the best handhelds you can get, even still to this day. A near perfect emulation machine for everything up to DS. But I haven't worked on it yet because I actually think I have another project I wanna use it for. And that will be a whole video in itself, if, if, if all goes according to plan. I haven't mentioned this yet, but the yen is way down. When I went back in 2019, one yen was about one penny, so the conversion was pretty easy. Now, it was like three quarters of a penny. Food was pretty cheap. Sometimes these retro game stores and these tech stores were pretty cheap. Sometimes you would get tax-free. You just show them your passport and, and you're good to go. Sometimes, like in Bic Camera, they give you a 5% off for using a credit card. Remember when I said E got that Burgundy DSi for so cheap? It was actually less than that because you got 5% off and no tax. It was like 5,200 yen, which is like 43 bucks. That's and then, crazy. And it's tax-free. And with a credit card, it's 5% off. So it ended up being like 35 bucks for an inbox DS. That is you, crazy. At too many games, you already know this, this would be like $300, uh -huh. easy. I spent the next few days in Japan just kind of enjoying Japan. I wasn't really thinking about game stores. I was trying to enjoy the food and the coffee. I had coffee from a different place every single day. And each one 
was amazing. I'll have a video on the Bob Wolf channel. That's just about all of the different coffees that I had while I was in Japan. After about five days in Tokyo, we took the Shinkansen down to Kyoto to stay at the Marafukuro Hotel. This is Nintendo's old headquarters and warehouse from the 1800s. They had a lot of cool bits of Nintendo history. But for the most part, it's just a really nice hotel that just so happens to be in the exact same spot that Nintendo was founded on. We did some cool stuff in Kyoto, had some amazing coffees, and found a store similar to Bic Camera called Yodobashi Camera. They had lots of controllers. That's the one. Like monitors, streamer equipment, this thing that I saw everywhere, and a hitbox controller for $256. This isn't a great deal, but the reason that it's notable is because those things are always sold out online. It's hard to get your hands on one of those, and I had it right there in front of me. The only reason I didn't pick this thing up was because it's big and bulky and heavy, and I didn't want to lug it all around the rest of our trip, and also on the flight home. While staying in Kyoto, we took a day trip to Osaka to go to Universal Studios and see Nintendo World. Hey, that was all right. The coffee at Toad's Cafe sucked ass. But that night, we headed straight to Osaka proper because Wood discovered my other favorite store of the whole trip, Sakugaya Specialty Store. These guys were a gold mine. This was by far the cheapest stuff we've seen all trip. Japan exclusive orange GameCube for $60, a PS1 for six bucks, a PSP for $40, and I probably should have got. Next time, I'm getting the PSP. Game Boy Color is ranging from $46 to $67. A bit of a better deal than what they were trying to rob me for over in Akihabara. Everybody walked away with huge bounties. I got a loose Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker for PSP in the junk section for a staggering 73 cents. Now you're appreciating the friendship. <laughs> Now I'm just beginning to realize I'm good for something. I picked up one of those Game Boy Colors. It was a clear one for 46 bucks, which wouldn't be that good of a deal, except it was in near mint condition. Maybe a couple of micro scratches on the lens, but the buttons and the casing were mint. No yellowing or anything. This is the most perfect stock Game Boy Color I've seen since the 90s. This one isn't even worth modding. This one should be preserved as is. But I also got something that I spent the whole trip looking for, a Famicom. This was nearing the end of our trip. I think we had one and a half days left, so my bags were getting full. I was hesitant to bring this big Famicom back with me, but it was $12. I'm gonna throw out some underwear or something. And finally, I got a Baby Blue DS Lite, complete in box. Everything was still wrapped in plastic, for Christ's sake. This is another near mint find. Very, very slight yellowing on the shoulder buttons, but not a scratch on it otherwise. The bottom screen has some signs of usage because it's a touch screen, but I realized it has a damn screen protector on it. I'm gonna leave it on. Obviously it's been used, somebody was doing that to it, but I could just peel that off. And then you have a perfect stock DS Lite for just $39. Again, a DS Lite, one of the best handhelds you can get right now, especially paired with an Easy Flash and an R4. That store was by far my favorite that we went to the whole trip. Everything was just so cheap and such good quality over there. Sticking to major cities did make things harder for us, but that Sakugaya store really saved the whole trip for us. I probably won't even be using any of the consoles that I got there. Everything was just in such good condition. Except for the Famicom, I'm gonna definitely use that. That was only 12 freaking dollars. Everything was just so cheap and in such good condition. That's why all of us left with such big bounties. If you haven't noticed, I still haven't found a good Game Boy Advance for myself. And this was kind of it. This was the last store we were going to. The next day we were going back to Tokyo and then we were hitting the plane and leaving. So we kind of called it. That night when we got to our last hotel in Tokyo, Wood decided to do one last Google search of game stores near that hotel. So we ended up at this little hole in the wall. The name on Google Maps is Famicom Shop Mario Shinbashi Store. I don't 
think that's the name. I think that's just some word soup for SEO reasons. This guy means business. They had signs all over in Japanese and English. Don't come in if you don't want to buy anything. Our prices are high, deal with it. And also, f you. And then, and then they called me bald. They did have a lot of near mint stuff. But after that Osaka store, I wasn't impressed. A clear Game Boy Color for $120? What did I get it for? A third of that? Game Boy Light, $187? I got one of those for like 50 bucks on eBay once. A Game Boy Macro, that's half of a DS. $400. This place kinda ain't it. But randomly, they had a GBA SP complete in box for $53. This isn't an amazing deal, but with a screen that's that well kept with a box and with an official charger, it suddenly becomes a decent deal. It's an AGS-001 model, which means that it has a front light and it's not as sought after as the AGS-101 model, which has a backlight. But I don't want the AGS-101 model because I wanna mod this thing. I would never mod an AGS-101 because that's already good as it is. I wouldn't mind putting a little work into a 001 to make it a little nicer. The only imperfections on this thing were on the case. It looked like it had been chewed on or something. That's an easy fix. After taking it home and inspecting it some more, I realized that this is another one of the best condition retro consoles that I have ever seen. Even with those bite marks, I think that Japanese people just take really good care of their stuff. And also these stores just really care about the quality of the stuff that flows through them. I thought about maybe not modifying it, maybe just leaving it as is because it's in such good condition and it even has the box. I thought about just maybe keeping it together and keeping it nice, but it's not an AGS 101. It's got some teeth marks on the on the case. It, it was also only $53. So why not make it cool? I hope that guy at the shop isn't going to get mad at me for what I did to his precious Game Boy. I got a bunch of stuff from Retro Game Repair Shop, not an affiliate. It needed a brand new case for sure. And you can get cases that fit brand new IPS screens. So you might as well get a brand new IPS screen. Now they suggested putting the included foam backing behind the screen as a sort of spacer, but in a clear shell, this would look ugly as hell. So I quickly 3D printed a simple spacer with a cute little Wolf Den logo on it. That'll be front and center when this whole thing is finished. I've actually never done a GBASP before. This was another one of the simpler mods that I've done. The only issues I had were with the shoulder buttons. Those springs are always terrible. Somebody can't develop like a better shoulder button that has the, the little standoff and the spring and, and the shoulder button all as one piece so you don't keep losing it and having to put it all together and having it pop off every five seconds. It takes like 14 tries to get the shoulder buttons in the damn thing. I think what made this extra bad is that I stripped one screw when I was putting it all back together and then I had to open it back up again for some reason and I had to place the shoulder buttons back in there like I was building a fucking model boat in a bottle. But now I have one of the most beautiful Game Boy Advance SPs that I've ever seen. Absolutely worth the two-ish hours I spent on it and definitely worth the trip to Japan and the sacrificed $50 Game Boy Advance with teeth marks on it. Thank you very much, Shinbashi guy. Long story short, go to Akihabara if you've never been, but don't expect to get any good deals there. Nakano, Tokyo, and Osaka are where it's at if you want to stick to the major cities, which is great because you can take the train to all of these. I really wish we spent more time in Osaka because I wanted to go to Dantonbury and, and eat all of the food, and we didn't really get to do that. But also, because even now, looking at it, I'm seeing a bunch of other retro game stores around Osaka that could have been just as good, if not better, than the Sakagaya store that we went to. But if you really want the good retro gaming deals, you gotta rent a car and go drive out into the sticks. Retro Future actually just uploaded a bunch of videos where he did just that. I also just got finished watching Trainer Tips video on his second channel where he gets in a car, drives to all of these different retro game stores, and then mods a Game Boy Advance, just like I did. I kind of wish I saw that while I was there. Maybe I would have made a better effort to go out into the into the country. They both went to a lot of book-offs and hard-offs, and those are great, but the ones that I went to in the cities were not. 
I didn't even include them in this video. One of them basically only had Switch games. And you'll probably see that in Wood's videos. Wood is making a bunch of videos about this trip. I think I'm gonna be in some of them. So go keep an eye out for that over on his channel. What do you guys think about the Japan trip and what we ended up getting in the end? I'm kind of happy with this stuff that I walked away with. I'm most happy with how good the quality is on some of this stuff. Also, let me know what you think about that Game Boy Advance in this video. Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. Don't forget to check out the Bob Wolf channel video about all the coffees that I drank. Thank you guys for being here. The most important thing you can do is just subscribe here, share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe wants to go learn what not to do. Thank you very much. Have a good week. Come here. Give me a hug.